Today on the newscast with Ramadan right around the corner, will Iran and Hamas make the Temple Mount in Jerusalem a flashpoint once again? Get my take next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman newscast. Well, it is that time of year again. Ramadan is right around the corner. The Muslim holiday begins on Monday, March 11th. And folks, there are serious concerns that, yet again, Hamas and its patrons in Iran will turn Ramadan into a very volatile month in the world's most volatile and chaotic region, the Middle East. Now, a few things here to catch you up on. Number one, there have been a lot of debate in Israel's security cabinet about what to do on the Temple Mount during Ramadan. Remember, in past years, Hamas has used the Temple Mount as a rallying cry to instigate attacks against Israel, saying again and again that Israel is, quote, defiling the Temple Mount, and in particular, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which obviously sits atop the Temple Mount. So there was a lot of debate. Remember, May 2021, a war we covered extensively here on the Watchman newscast. Hamas launched a war as Ramadan closed, and for them it was all about, again, Al-Aqsa and those accusations that Israel was defiling Al-Aqsa. That was a bloody 12-day war, again, instigated by Hamas, and obviously with a major war unfolding right now in Gaza, there are serious concerns in Israel that Hamas will do it once again. Why? Because they're saying exactly that. Just last week, Hamas leader Ismail Haneya called on thousands of Muslims, hundreds of thousands, to march on the Al-Aqsa Mosque during Ramadan. And of course, the puppet master in Tehran is looming in the background and pulling the strings and looking to ignite the region, in particular again, Jerusalem. So today, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, look, we are not going to curb worship atop the Temple Mount for Muslim worshipers. We believe that freedom of worship in Jerusalem is paramount. There has been, as I mentioned a minute ago, a serious internal debate, though, between Bibi and other ministers in his security cabinet, in particular Itamar Ben-Gavir, who want Muslim worship curtailed during Ramadan, again, because of those concerns over a major explosion, quite literally, atop the Temple Mount in the coming month. And with the region right now, folks, an absolute tinderbox, as Israel and Hamas are going toe-to-toe in Gaza, many are anticipating this coming Ramadan with the kind of anticipation that is more dread than a hopeful time of prayer and introspection, needless to say. So our good friend Yair Pinto is on the case here covering this story on the ground in Jerusalem. You've seen Yair here on The Watchman. You can also subscribe to his great channel at TBN Israel right here on YouTube. And Yair broke down the history of the Temple Mount and this canard that Israel is trying to defile the Al-Aqsa Mosque, destroy the mosque and the Dome of the Rock uh, atop the Temple Mount. This has been going on, folks. It's not a recent development. These rallying cries or using the Temple Mount, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, as a rallying cry has been going on for decades now among jihadist Muslims. So Yair gives a bit of the history up until the modern day when, remember, Hamas deemed October 7th the largest massacre of the Jewish people since the Holocaust, Al-Aqsa Flood. That was not by coincidence. Here is our good friend, Yair Pinto. So the Temple Mount compound is where the first and second Jewish biblical temples of God stood. And the first one was built dozens of years before 621 AD. But at some point in subsequent centuries, the idea that the farthest mosque referred to in this story was on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, and it became widely accepted. Thus, the first mosque on that site was built by the Muslim conquerors of Jerusalem in the early 8th century. It was built there on the ruins of a Byzantine church. 
deliberate demonstration of the belief that their religion supersedes the Christian and Jewish religions which had been founded in the city centuries earlier. A few decades later, the original mosque building was destroyed by an earthquake and rebuilt. The new building was destroyed by an even larger earthquake which caused massive devastation all over the region in the year 1033. It was around this time that the phrase Al-Aqsa is in danger became a rallying cry for Palestinian Arabs, giving them an issue to gather around and a point to direct their collective efforts. It continues to serve this purpose down to the present day, and over the years, this mythical cry has been embellished to include an entire false narrative about Jewish plans to demolish the building along with the nearby Dome of the Rock and build a third temple on that site in its place. But where did this phrase even come from? Who first used it and why? The origins of this falsehood can be traced back to the days of the great Mufti Hajj Amin al Husseini, who was the spiritual and political leader of the Palestinian Arab community in the 1920s and 30s. In the wake of the Arab revolt, which began in 1936 and continued until late into 1939, the British expelled the Grand Mufti. He promptly made his way to Berlin, where he was offered his services to Adolf Hitler and was instrumental in recruiting Yugoslavian Muslims to serve in the Waffen-SS and participate in the Nazi Holocaust of European Jews. But before that, as he was leading the Palestinian Arab community in the British Mandate period between the world wars, he invented many lies, false narratives to get his people fired up against their Jewish neighbors. Many of those false narratives continue to be widely believed by Arabs and Muslims in Israel and around the world and have even become widespread outside the Arab and Muslim worlds. However, this hasn't stopped Hamas and the various other Islamic terrorist groups and even more moderate voices such as the Palestinian Authority from latching on to this issue to steer up opposition against Israel. As time has passed, the myth of the Jewish desire for control of an aqsa has been repeated so often that some have decided that it must be true. Serious academic studies have been conducted on the subject at major universities and think tanks across the Islamic world and even in Western countries. Religious conferences have been organized around it and public officials in many countries have raised the issue in public discourse. It's important to understand that the false narrative that Al-Aqsa is in danger has been weaponized to such a degree that it has grown into a global phenomenon. It has been spread through channels like Al Jazeera, used by Qatar to promote the vision of a global Muslim caliphate and the destruction of Jerusalem. This idea is also propagated in many Western countries due to the influx of Muslim immigrants from regions affected by Islamic terrorism in the Middle East. Israel continuously works to protect the mosques and their integrity, but perversely, it is often accused of complicity in actions intended to damage the Temple Mount mosques. Thanks again to our good friend Yair Pinto of TBN Israel for that great report. Folks, remember to subscribe, number one, to the TBN Israel channel for Yair's daily report. And number two, hey, quick reminder, programming note, mark your calendars March 25th. Stacklebeck Tonight launches on TBN every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and then again at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you like Yair's reporting, well, you will see him on the brand new show, 
on a regular basis. Yair will be our Israel correspondent on Stackelbeck tonight on TBN. Again, every weeknight, Monday through Friday, launching March 25th. Make sure to mark your calendars. And a quick parting note here, folks, as we observe everything going on in Jerusalem right now, this should come to no surprise to any Bible believer. The book of Zechariah, chapter 12, lays out a day that is coming when Jerusalem will, quote, become like a burdensome stone. And although all nations come against it, anyone who touches Jerusalem, the apple of God's eye, will be cut to pieces. I believe we see the groundwork for that prophecy's fulfillment occurring right now and unfolding before our very eyes in real time. Jerusalem is not only the literal geographic center of the world, it is the center of God's prophetic plan for this world. So, hey, fasten your seatbelts. Be encouraged that God Almighty is still on the throne amid all the chaos unfolding right now. He's in control, and yes, He does have a plan. And if you are a follower of Jesus, you're a part of that plan. How great is that? Hey, be sure to join us here tomorrow on The Watchman. Until then, thanks for joining us today. God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out The Watchman Newscast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an upload. And tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. And don't forget to share your thoughts, insights, and comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.